Today I'm going to be showing you how you can perform a survey resection using our handy surveying total station. Now if you don't know how to set up a total station, I recommend that you watch my last video. It goes over the important details in setting up the instrument and making sure that it's leveled in order to capture accurate data. And then come back to this video to use the total station to complete various surveying tasks. Now in today's video, we're going to be going over the surveying resection. A survey resection is occupying a point that you don't know the coordinates to. This means that there's no northing, easting, or elevations, or X, Y, and Z coordinates on the point. So where your setup is pretty much arbitrary, and the instrument doesn't know where to place itself in the world. However, if you have points with known locations, you can use these points to calculate where your instrument is set up. Remember these points? The blue, green, and orange points? Yeah, we're going to be using these points to calculate where our total station is located. Now, while these points may seem familiar, I did, however, make one small modification. I set these little hubs in the ground. A hub is a small piece of wood that is driven into the ground to indicate a specific point and then usually put a mark on it so that there is a specific location to where this point is on the top of the stake. I've placed this hub on all of our known points. That way I'm able to specifically pinpoint a location when referring to these colors. Alright, so we have these known points with known coordinates, but how does that do any good for us? What are we doing with these points to calculate our point? By occupying the unknown point, we can then resection our location by taking a distance and an angle between all of these points. What we're going to do is start out by sighting one point at one specific location. We will then do something called back sight to the point. Remember back sighting from leveling? It's the same concept. You're zeroing out your location, quite literally. Every time I move the total station left and right, you can see the angle changes just slightly. So we're able to capture to the nearest second the change in our angle. Once we find the location of where we want to be sighted, we can then set the angle to zero. And then any turning we do will reference that angle at zero degrees. So you're probably wondering what exactly are we going to use to sight these points? Let me introduce you to what we like to call the prism rod. This is a prism and it has a 360 degree reflective mirror. When you guys look into this thing, you should see the camera lens. So in video, every time you guys look into this thing at every angle, you're going to see the camera lens to my camera. In the real world, every time I look into this with my eyes, I can just see my eyes. That's because the source of sight, whether it's a camera or your eyes or the total station, will always observe this prism, hence the name 360 degree prism. Now I also set a new point. Now this is point unknown. In the future we'll call this point pink, but for now I want to set an unknown point with an unknown coordinate to then later on verify that our coordinates are accurate. So what we're going to be doing is setting up our rod at every single one of these points. We will then be taking a distance and measure how far away that point is. With that reading, we're also going to measure the angle between this point and the point previous to it. Every time we sight a new point, we will then reset our angle to zero to then measure a new angle to the next point. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're first gonna turn this device on the prism that you might be using may or may not use this little device, depending on if your instrument is robotic or not. Robotic total stations are self-observant. They can sight and figure out where sensors are located in space, and I don't need to sit behind the instrument to search and look for my prism every time. However, for this video, I will be behind the total station at all times, just to show you that you can do this with or without robotic. It doesn't really matter. First thing we're gonna do is step on the legs and embed this bipod into the ground. Go ahead and make sure that this bubble is leveled. We do that by pressing down on the bipod buttons and maneuvering the rod in a way so that we finally get the bubble into the middle of the circle. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna show you how to use this total station to sight points from the prism. Now the prism is located at a further distance away from our total station. What we need to do is sight the total station to look directly at the prism 
and then capture the location difference between where we're set up and where the prism is located. To do that, you're going to position the total station, point it in the direction of the rod. Then you're going to tilt the optics up and down to find the exact location. And you look through the optics to see exactly where the prism is on the rod. This ring right here allows us to focus our sight so that we can see the rod and the prism nice and clear. This little one right here allows us to focus our crosshairs so that we can see where the center of our scope is at. The knobs on the side here are fine tuning knobs that make the instrument go left and right and make the scope go up and down. To take a measurement, we simply press the record button. All right, let's go ahead and take our first measurement. Okay, and when we look into the total station here, all right, we're a little bit out of focus. Let's try to get ourselves into focus. All right, that looks good. And then we're going to go left and then up. And it looks like that right there is the center. We just have to get close. You don't have to be perfect. Now we take our first measurement. Okay, we now have a reading from our unknown point to point blue. Let's take a look at what we got. So it looks like the distance from our occupation point to the rod is 34.645 feet. Because this is the first point that we're measuring, the angle is actually going to be set to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, our angle is set to zero. We have our distance. We can now record this in our field book. Let's go ahead and move to the next point. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and... Okay, looks good. And record. All right, so looking here, we can see that from our point of occupation to the rod, it is 51.150 feet. Now the angle between point blue and point green is 65 degrees 36 minutes and 40 seconds. That's how much we rotated our total station to sight this point. We will record all this data and then we will go ahead and reset our zero angle to measure the next point. All right, now we're gonna sight our unknown point. Okay, and here's what we're reading. From the location of where we're occupying to our set unknown point, the distance is 36.035. The angle between point green and this unknown point are 72 degrees, 10 minutes, and 42 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and zero out our angle. The next position that we have to go to is point orange. That looks good. Okay, and here we are. So the distance is 57.445 feet from our occupation to point orange. The angle between our unknown pink point and orange is 74 degrees, 30 minutes, and 28 seconds. All right, we'll zero this out, and we have one more angle and distance to measure. To complete the resection, we have to go back to the first point that we shot in order to measure the angle between our last point and the initial first point. So let's go back to point blue. Bring this into focus. To the left. Go up right there. Perfect. Measure. All right, we're good. All right, here's the final measurement. We see our distance again from the point that we're occupying to point blue. It's 34.645 feet, which matches what we had last time, so that's good. The angle this time between point orange and point blue is 147 degrees, 42 minutes, and 39 seconds. If you found this video to be informative, please like the video. If you enjoy surveying content and look forward to seeing more videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.